Good morning and welcome back to my kitchen. I will be showing you how to make okono and okra soup mixed together. I do have a video that shows you how to make okono alone and I will be leaving that video link in the description section below. Let's get to it. Let us assemble our ingredients. You need meat of your choice. I will be using goat meat, okono powder, okra. I like to use uziza leaf because it has a different distinct taste to it but you can use any vegetable of your choice that would do. Onion, seasoning powder, ground dry pepper, dry fish. As usual the full list will be in the description section with its measurement. Please do check that. Thank you. We'll start by cooking our meat. Into your washed meat, add seasoning powder. Your crushed onion paste. Your dry ground pepper. I like to do this to kind of flavor the meat a little bit and make it a little bit spicy. Stir together and then go ahead and cook them. I will not be adding water at this stage because I want the meat to absorb every of the spices very well and for it to release its natural flavor too back into the stock it's going to be producing. Moreover, the meat is going to produce some water so that is going to do. Add in your salt and then we are good to go with cooking our meat. I'll be using the frozen cut okra, so give it a quick tour and get it into the processor to chop it up. All you need to do is just give it a few pulls and that will help you to chop your okra. Transfer this into a bowl and just add some onion. Well, to be honest, I just do this out of habit. I like to kind of flavor it a little bit with some onion but you can leave this step out it will still not alter the taste of your soup next thing we are going to do is to dissolve our ogono powder you see all those chunks you need to fully dissolve them if not you're not just going to add this into your soup it's going to settle down into your soup and it will not be nice into a pan pour in this amount of oil, I use two cooking tables, two cooking spoon, and then go ahead and add your onion. Again, onion is just adding more flavor. You're going to saute this onion for a little bit, not too much. Make sure your oil is hot enough before you pour it into the obono powder. If it's not hot enough, it's not going to it's not going to dissolve the obono. So you need it to be hot, but not bleached, just hot. Go ahead and do this and stir your obono very well until it is well dissolved. Then set it aside. While your meat is still cooking, you're going to go ahead and debone your fish and give it a good watch. Before deboning, I soaked my fish in warm water for about 5 to 10 minutes. So it will be soft and easy for me to open it up and handle it. So that's what it will look like. Let me show you what you will get if you do not wash your fish very well. This. It will be full of sand. So you don't want that to go into your soup, do you? So please wash your fish properly. Check on your meat and see if it is getting done. As you can see, the meat already produced some liquid. That is what I'm talking about before. Some minutes later, we're going to check on the doneness of your meat and see if it is soft enough for you. Remember, you still be cooking, so it doesn't necessarily have to be super soft. At this stage, go ahead and add water. 
because we are going to be adding some more spices so it's not really going to be diluting your stock add in your way that's what i like to use if you don't have that you can leave it out spoon in your crayfish as well give it a taste and see if you need anything else then continue cooking Once all the spices have mixed thoroughly and properly, add your dry fish. I do not add this at the beginning because I like to build my flavor. So this would, it's already soft, so you don't want it to become too soft in your soup and then it will disappear. At this stage, your soup stock should be tasting very nice. And everything should be balanced with the pepper, the whey, the salt, the seasoning powder. Then we'll go ahead and add our obono. I would like to bring your attention to the fact that the quality of your obono powder will make or break your obono soup. Ensure that your obono powder is fresh. If it's not fresh, you're going to have this soapy awkward taste out of your soup so best advice is to buy your obono seed and mill it in front of you that's the best way and when you finish doing that store it in the freezer for freshness apart from the weird soapy taste another tell sign that says that your obono is of quality is that you will see these bubbles all around your obono soup when you're cooking it. So that shows that that obono is good. Now, see the thickness of my obono. I'm not going to make it too thick because I'm still going to be adding okra. So this is perfect for me. But before you would even dream of adding okra, make sure that you cook up your obono thoroughly. Lower the stove if you need to lower it and continue cooking for let's say 20 minutes that's fine check on your obono at interval to ensure it's not burning if it's burning reduce the stove so that it will cook some more once your obono is tasting like obono like you would know then go ahead and add your okra it will be one of the very last thing you do because okra doesn't have to cook for long on stove. The amount that you use is dependent on how much okra you want in your obono. I really do not want too much because I will still be adding uziza leaf as shown. Like I said, you can substitute your uziza leaf with kale or ugu that's fine but i prefer uziza allow everything to simmer and cook and then your bono is ready i hope you're going to try this recipe i say that all the time but i really do hope you try this recipe and leave your feedback your comments and your questions in the comment section i love to read them and I reply each of them. Until next time, when I see you all again, let's learn and cook together. Bye-bye.